Dear students, welcome to EPT Path Sala. I am Dr. U. Zerina B., Professor, Dean, Faculty of Business Administration, Avinash Lingam University. In this module, you would like to study about secondary data published sources. The task of data collection begins after a research problem has been defined. The researcher should keep in mind the two types of data, namely primary and secondary. The primary data are those which are collected afresh and for the first time and thus happen to be original in character. The secondary data are those which have already been collected by someone else and which have already been passed through the statistical process. The methods of collecting primary and secondary data differ since primary data are to be originally collected while in case of secondary data the nature of data collection work is merely that of compilation the sources of collecting secondary data are published and unpublished source this module deals with only published sources of secondary data collection this module will include the concept of secondary data published and unpublished sources, evaluation and application of published data, advantages and disadvantages of secondary data, published sources of secondary data collection. After completing this module, you will be able to know the concepts of secondary data, understand the application and usage of published data, acquire the knowledge of various sources of published data know the advantages and disadvantages of secondary data this module is part of the course research methodology and statistics for home science this module is designed to give you the usage of published data and its application in your research work Concept of secondary data. Secondary data is the data collected by someone else other than the researcher himself. This data can be gathered from government records, books, trade associations, national or international institutes, statistics agencies, etc. Secondary data is used to increase the sampling size of research studies and is also chosen for the efficiency and the speed that comes with using an already existing resource. Secondary data facilitates large research projects in which many research groups working in tandem collect secondary data. The main researcher is then allowed to focus on primary research or particular areas of interest. This division of labor helps researchers learn more in less time. The benefit of secondary data is that much of the preliminary work is done. The data may have already been sorted in an electronic format published and reviewed with case studies already conducted. Secondary data can quickly become more or less public knowledge through use in the media. Due to its exposure and public examination, secondary data can carry more legitimacy than primary research data and is often used as verification of primary data. The secondary sources can be classified into two categories. One is published sources and the other is unpublished sources. What are published sources? The term published is most commonly associated with text materials either in traditional printed format or online published sources or international, national, government, semi-government, private corporate bodies, trade association, expert committee and commission reports and research reports. These reports are published 
on regular basis annually quarterly monthly fortnightly weekly and daily basis published sources is the most important source of secondary data collection published data is the most reliable secondary source of information the validity of published data is greater than unpublished data what are unpublished sources the statistical data need not always be published there are various sources of unpublished sources such as the records maintained by private firms business enterprises callers research workers etc they may not like to release their data to any outside agency next we can see the evaluation of secondary data evaluation means the following four requirements must be satisfied one availability primarily it has to be seen that whether the kind of data you want is available or not if it is not available then you have to go for primary data second one relevance the data should beat the requirements of the problem the two criterions to be noted are a units of measurement should be the same and b concept used must be same and currency of data should not be outdated 3 accuracy in order to find how accurate the data is the following points must be considered one specification and methodology used and the other one margin of error should be examined and third one the dependability of the source must be seen finally the fourth one is sufficiency adequate data should be available now let us pass on to application of published sources of secondary data secondary data represents a vast resource to sociologists it is easy and free to use it can include information about very large populations that would be expensive and difficult to obtain secondary data is available from time periods other than the present day it is literally impossible to conduct primary research about events attitudes styles or norms that are no longer present in today's world to conduct meaningful secondary analysis researchers must spend significant time in reading and learning about the origins of the data set through careful reading and learning researchers can determine the purpose for which the material was collected or created the specific methods used to collect it the population studied and the validity of the sample captured the credentials and credibility of the collector or creator the limits of the data set the historic and political circumstances surrounding the creation or collection of the material before using secondary data a researcher must consider how the data are coded are categorized and how this might influence the outcomes of the secondary data analysis one should also consider whether the data must be adapted or adjusted in some way prior to conducting analysis let us see advantages of secondary data the major advantages of secondary data are one secondary data saves time that would otherwise be spent collecting data and provides larger and higher quality databases that would be unfeasible for any individual researcher to collect on their own two a clear benefit of using secondary data is that much of the background work needed has been already carried out 
for example literature reviews case studies published text and statistics are already used elsewhere media promotion and personal contacts have also been utilized 3 it is always wise to begin any research activity with a review of the secondary data 4 secondary data generally have a pre established degree of validity and reliability which need not be re examined by the researcher who is reusing such data 5 it is economical it saves efforts and expenses 6 it helps to make primary data collection more specific since with the help of secondary data we are able to make out what are the gaps and deficiencies and what additional information needs to be collected 7 it helps to improve the understanding of the problem 8 it provides a basis for comparison of the data that is collected by the researcher disadvantages of secondary data the disadvantages of secondary data includes one official statistics may reflect the biases of those in power limiting what you can find out two official statistics the way things are measured may change over time making historical comparisons difficult 3 documents may lack authenticity parts of the document might be missing because of age and we might not even be verified who actually wrote the document meaning we cannot check whether it is biased or not 4 documents may not be representative of the wider population especially a problem with older documents many documents do not survive because they are not stored and others deteriorate with age and become unusable other documents are deliberately withheld from researchers and the public gaze and therefore do not become available now let us see collection of secondary data secondary data may either be published or unpublished data usually published data are available in a various publications of foreign government or of international bodies and their subsidiary organization b various publications of central state and local government c technical and trade journal d book magazines and newspaper e reports and publications of various associations connected with business and industry banks stock exchanges etc f prepared reports prepared by research scholars universities economists fetching different field g public records and statistics historical documents and other sources of published information data are also published on the websites such as the official websites of reserve bank of india national stock exchange etc most of the data are freely available and provided in excel worksheet the sources of unpublished data are found in diaries letters unpublished biographics and autobiographics and also may be available with scholars and research workers trade associations labor bureaus and other public private individuals and organizations researcher must be very careful in using secondary data dr a l bowley very aptly observes that it is never safe to take published statistics at their face value without knowing their meaning and limitations and it is always necessary to criticize arguments that can be based on them factors to be considered while collecting data from secondary sources one accuracy of data 
one should evaluate the credibility of sources of data and methods used to collect the data because these factors directly influence the accuracy of data. 2. Time and cost required in collecting data. Some sources of data charge money in order to give access to their information. So, an organization needs to evaluate this cost with the cost of collecting data by themselves. Published sources. The sources of published data are as below. 1. Official publications of central and local government. For example, CBS, NRB, different ministries, etc. 2. Official publications of semi-government statistical organization. For example, Tribhavan University, Nepal Bank Limited, NIDC, Nepal Telecom Limited, NEA, etc. Official publications of foreign government or international bodies like UNO, World Bank, ADB, WTO, UNESCO, etc. 4. Reports and publications of trade union, chamber of commerce, commercial banks, cooperatives, stock exchange, etc. 5. Reports submitted to economists, research scholars, universities and various educational and research institutions. 6. Reports of various committees and commissions appointed by the government. 7. Newspaper and periodicals. The above sources are discussed in the following headings. 1. Published printed sources. There are various published printed sources. Their credibility depends on many factors. For example, on the writer, publishing company and time and data when published. New sources are preferred and old sources should be avoided as new technology and researchers brings new facts into light. Serials, journals, magazines and newspapers are serial publication that are published on an ongoing basis. Many scholarly journals in the sciences and social sciences include primary source in articles where the author's report on research is undertaken. These papers may use the first person we observe. These articles usually follow a standard format with sections like methods, results and conclusions. Series may also include book reviews, editorials and review articles. Review articles summarize research on a particular topic but they do not present any new findings. Therefore, they are considered secondary sources. Their bibliographics however can be used to identify primary sources. Books. Books are available on various topics of research. The uses of books start before the selection of topic. After a selection of topics, books provide insight on how much work has already been done on the same topic and literature review. Books are secondary source but most authentic one in secondary sources. Most books are secondary sources where authors refer primary source materials and add their own analysis. Lincoln at Gettysburg, The Words That Remade America by Gary Wills is about Abraham Lincoln's Gettysburg address. If you are searching Abraham Lincoln, this book would be a secondary source because Wills is offering his views about Lincoln and the Gettysburg Address. Next, government documents. Government documents provide evidence of activities, functions and policies at all government levels. For research that relates to the workings of the government, government documents are primary sources. These documents include hearings and debates of legislative bodies. 
the official text of laws, regulations and treaties, records of government expenditure and finances and statistical compilations of economic, demographic and scientific data. Next, journals and periodicals. Journals and periodicals are becoming more important as far as data collection is concerned. The reason is that journals provide up to date information which at times books cannot provide. And secondly, journals can give information on specific topic rather than general topics. Next, magazine. Magazines are also effective but not very reliable. Newspaper is more reliable and in some cases information can be obtained only from newspapers as in the case of some political studies. Newspaper notices. Newspaper can be valuable source of family history, providing announcement of engagement, marriages, birth, death and other noteworthy events. Coverage varies from paper to paper and access to newspapers varies widely. Some maintain online archives while others may only be accessible through libraries. A number of database vendors have taken on projects to archive historical newspapers, in some cases going back into the 1700. Large public libraries and most university libraries will have access to a variety of newspapers, both current and historical. And next, a very important published source is e-publishing electronic publishing also referred to as e-publishing or digital publishing or online publishing includes the digital publication of e-book, digital magazines and the development of digital libraries and catalogs. Electronic publication has become common where it has been argued that peer-reviewed scientific journals or in the process of being replaced by electronic publication. It is also becoming common to distribute books, magazines and newspapers to consumers through tablet reading devices, a market that is growing by millions each year generated by online vendors such as Amazon Bookstore for Kindle and books in the Google Play Bookstore. Although distribution via the internet also known as online publishing or web or web publishing when in the form of a website is nowadays strongly associated with electronic publishing. There are many non-network electronic publications such as Encyclopedia on CD, DVD as well as technical and reference publications relied on by mobile users and others without reliable and high speed access to a network. Electronic publishing is also being used in the field of test preparation in developed as well as in developing economics for student education. It enables content and analytics combined for the benefit of students. Electronic publication is increased properly in works of fiction. The companies do not have to order printed books and have them delivered. E-publishing also make a wider range of books available including books those customers would not find in standard book retailers due to insufficient demand for a traditional print run. E-publication is enabling new authors to release books that would be unlikely to be profitable for traditional publishers. As internet is becoming more advanced, fast and reachable to the masses, it has been seen that much of the information which are not available in printed form is available on internet. The reason is that 
in the past journals and books were seldom published on internet but presently almost every journal and book is available online some are free and some are payable e journals these are more commonly available than printed journals latest journals are difficult to retrieve without subscription but if university has e library access it can be viewed finally secondary data is a research approach used to examine previously collected data it helps to improve on interview techniques and identify strategies that may be applied to a more open style of interviewing the published data is cheaper and quicker to collect and for accuracy particular attention should be paid to definitions used measurement error source bias reliability and the time span of secondary data searches of published secondary data begin with the consultation of referral sources such as directories handbooks indexes and the like with the advent of internet searches of published sources are becoming more efficient and more effective computer based information system give access to four different types of database bibliographic numeric directories and full text before making use of published data there is a need to evaluate both the data itself and its source in this module you have learned all about secondary data collection and published sources we shall learn about the various sources of unpublished data in the subsequent modules